In the previous video, I had mentioned that the number of newborns in Japan increased significantly after World War II. Many people grew up reading Japanese manga, and led by Tezuka Osamu, many manga artists who had also experienced the war often added some aspects of fear and sadness about war within their manga. That new generation who grew up reading this type of manga would naturally feel guilty about the war and long for peace. They would sometimes stand on the opposite side of the state and oppose all non-democratic, non-liberal mandatory rules and regulations. This made the Japanese government begin to suppress some excessive manga, making manga develop in an unrealistic direction. Back in 1968, at that time, there was a live-action film or television drama called Tokusatsu, which had been a huge hit since Ultraman was broadcasted in 1966. Although Tokusatsu had nothing to do with manga and anime at the time, after seeing that Subaraya Productions recently took a fancy to the big cake of anime and started to produce Tokusatsu anime, it seems that it is worth mentioning. It may be because, at that time, Japan would suppress works with sensitive themes. During that time, the themes of manga were mostly either sports or supernatural, such as Ashita no Jo, one of the fighting manga that was born in 1968 and had the greatest influence on future Japanese manga. The work story of ordinary people pursuing goals and ideals step by step through their own efforts also reflects the process of Japan's transition from a defeated country to a stage of revival at the time. The death of a character named Toru Rikishi in that year's work gave birth to the first real funeral of a fictional manga character. In the same year, the anime Gegege no Kitaro began to be broadcast. Other than the second series, this anime would be remade into another anime by Toei Animation about every 10 years, and now there are already 6 seasons. What's interesting is that in this work, you can directly see the changes in the style of Japanese anime in the past 50 years, and how Japanese aesthetics have changed step by step with Moe culture. There is a character in Gegege no Kitaro called Neko Musume, which translates to cat chick or cat girl. This is how she looked in the manga, and this is how she looked in the first season of the anime. During the time period from 1967 to 1968, Nekomusume was only a one-time side character, and it was difficult to identify her gender from her appearance. Remember what she looks like now, and then between 1971 and 1972, the anime's art style changed to color, and Nekomusume became a member of the main cast, wearing a big bow, dress, and beginning to appear more feminine. In 1985's third season, Nekomusume had a softer appearance and a more feminine figure. The fourth season in 1996 was influenced by Moe culture, and her body became childish, combining cat and girl features. In 2007, the fifth season Nekomusume completely changed into another person, changing her hairstyle, raising her head, and her body became a normal girl's size, not to mention often changing her outfit from being a maid to wearing a swimsuit. Finally, coming to the sixth season in 2018, before that, let's review the first season of Neko Musume, the 136cm androgynous side character who becomes like this after 50 years. A model body, high heels, and a tsundere. In contrast of her, Minamoto Shizuka's can only be regarded as some microplastic surgery. I'm a bit curious now about what she'll be like in 2028, a cyber cat girl? After talking about the style of the artwork, let's go back to 1968. In that year, there were not only sad things for the manga industry, Weekly Shonen Jump, which we are now familiar with, was founded in that year. In the same year, Tezuka Osamu left Mushi Production and founded Tezuka Productions. Even without Tezuka Osamu, Mushi Production was still animating Tezuka Osamu's manga works, one of which was Dororo, which aired in 1969. I think you will be familiar with it. This work was a new anime jointly produced by MAPPA and Tezuka Productions in 2019 for its 50th anniversary. In the original manga, Hiyaki Maru's father forged a pact with a total of 48 demons, and Hiyaki Maru in the manga often talks a lot without the type of mystery elements in the new work. So I think the adaptation in the new anime is a perfect complement to the deficiencies of the old one. During that time, it was nothing like the modern times, as there were no isekai works full of western medieval culture, and most of them belonged to a similar category of works like Dororo, this type of series about the Japanese supernatural. In fact, the first orthodox western-style fantasy manga in Japan has the same father as Dororo, and it is also Tezuka Osamu. In 1969, he created Triton of the Sea, which is not only the first orthodox western-style fantasy manga in Japan, but also the first recognized in-depth anime original. Even after so many achievements, Tezuka Osamu was still trying to explore new territory. This time, his goal was adult anime. From 1969 to 1973, these four years, he worked on a total of three adult anime, including a large number of sexy and artistic anime, each of which received mixed reviews. A Thousand and One Nights, Cleopatra, 
and Belladonna of Sadness. Among them, Cleopatra became the next first film to be given the self-applied X rating in the United States, while Belladonna of Sadness became one of the most successful films of its time, inspiring 1997's revolutionary girl Utena. After entering the 1970s, the Japanese film market declined due to competition with the TV market. Toei Animation began to get rid of Disney-style anime production and began to produce TV anime mainly. In addition, due to the bankruptcy of Mushi production, related anime industries began to fend for themselves, and animation studios such as Madhouse and Sunrise were established. Because of the above reasons, more young animators hoped to be able to supervise and work harder. This move also allowed more anime types to be trial produced and brought to the anime market. Ever since a manga called Opage no Kyutaro became famous in 1964, its authors began to create works in a similar style. And finally, its author Fujigo F. Fujio created the world-famous Doraemon in December 1969. This work has been loved by children ever since it was published, and has inspired many manga artists, so that in many future cartoons about children, you can see the shadows of characters similar to those in Doraemon, and it is without a doubt a classic manga. In 1971, the first adult television anime, Lupin the Third, debuted. In 1972, science fiction type anime became popular. Mazinger Z and Science Ninja Team Gatchaman began to be broadcasted. In particular, Science Ninja Team Gatchaman created many unique content and techniques in that year. The most widely spread is its five-man team design, that is, five people with completely different personalities form a team, and that feeling of experiencing conflicts and quarrels in the process of getting along and finally growing up is expressed. They're categorized as a hot-blooded boy, plus a cold-attituded boy, plus a dull fat man, plus a vase heroine, plus a funny kid. But I still firmly believe that the original five-man team came from Doraemon. By the way, this series also launched a new work called Gachaman Crowds in 2013, which put the genres of superheroes and utopias together. It is quite interesting, and I recommend you watch it. That same year, Japan's first shoujo manga covering feminism, The Rose of Versailles, began serialization. Devilman's manga and its first anime were released in less than a month apart from each other. At the time, the content of the anime was not as dark as that of Devilman Crybaby. Nagai Goes Devilman, Ikeda Ryoko's The Rose of Versailles, and Blackjack, which would be serialized by Tezuka Osamu in 1973, are called the three immortal masterpieces of the 1970s. At the same time, Blackjack, as the originator of the world's first successful medical manga, was the starting manga as the first of its genre. After the great success of Devilman, its author Naga Go began to try a new theme, which was Cutie Honey. It took me a long time to accept the fact that these two works were written by the same person. The gap in style is way too huge. But considering that this guy started serializing the 18 and up manga Harenshi Gakuen in 1968, it's not surprising. It was this guy that created the precedence of H manga, so that many manga in the future will be drawn with some scenes of women walking around naked to win the favor of the male readers. The real origin is probably Marilyn Monroe though. Before Harenshi Gakuen appeared, some younger characters would often show some white bloomers too. But back then, it was done to highlight the character's cuteness, like Udon in Astro Boy and Disney's Minnie Mouse. After 1968, this meaning completely changed. Did you think this was over? The legend of Nagai Go continues. Cutie Honey in 1973 could probably hang up and beat up the current ones we call hentai. Harenshi Gakuen is the source of the big-breasted characters in anime now, whose breasts are bigger than their brains. But it was two characters who really carried this tradition forward. Mind Fujiko from Lupin the Third and Kisaragi Honey from Cutie Honey. Cutie Honey is the first anime that not only the heroine, but also the antagonist group is known for their big breasts. These villains can also use their breasts as a weapon to emit lasers, missiles, etc. as a sexual metaphor. In addition, this is also the first anime in which the characters will be naked when they go through a transformation, and this plot setting will affect a lot of the magical girl anime genre in the future. At the same time, it is probably the work that made many of the boys in that era enlightened. Watching Cat's Eye when I was a kid almost left me with a lifelong impression. In 1974, Nagago changed his style again. This time, he started making robot manga. This man, like Tezuka Osamu, whose work can always become a classic, had left countless inspirations for future creators. The manga he created this time, called Getter Robo, showed the concept of merging robots for the first time, and reduced the number of the five-member group created from Science Ninja Team Gachaman to three people, a hot-blooded boy, plus a cold boy with a tragic life experience, plus a fat guy, three individuals who could polish and grow with each other. In the future, many anime teams would start with three, and the characters are basically the same. 
The only difference is that the fat guy may be replaced by a female character in order to add some romantic plots. Among these new ideas, the concept of merging robots has achieved great commercial success in Japan. Up until now, many toy manufacturers have launched various merging toy robots in order to grab pocket money from children. So far, the legend of Nagai Go has come to a temporary end, but 1974 was not just his stage. This year was not only the year that laid the foundation for the golden age of Japanese anime during the 1980s, but also the year that the man whose contribution to the Japanese anime industry and who's closest to Tezuka Osamu's level will be known.